guest on the Tea Time sofa is Trent Burton, director, filmmaker, and part of the Cosmic Shambles Network. His latest documentary film was released this week, Rapid Motion Through Space, an incomplete history of speed. Why are we fascinated by speed? Trent gives us an overview of what was investigated. So Trent, welcome to Tea Time with me, Ali Moja. How's it Thanks going? Thanks very much Thanks. for having me. Yeah, I mean, big night last night. Yeah, so last night was the online premiere. We had the world premiere on the 27th of January at the RI, but yesterday it was the documentary was all out for everyone to see properly. Fantastic. For those of people listening in, obviously, it, we're talking about rapid motion through space, an incomplete history of speed. Wow. How did this all begin, Trent? Oh, God. Uh, so the documentary uh, began sometime in one of the many lockdowns. Uh, it was going to be just uh, one of the many kind of audio podcast uh, projects that we do at Shambles. And then uh, kind of like everything we do, it got vastly out of hand and grew into something we thought we'd film. And then it, yeah, it grew into this feature length uh, documentary uh, that we started shooting probably start of last year. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, it's it's obviously been a, a culmination of events as well. And I've noticed that, you know, you've got some of the usual suspects, Dr. Dean Burnett and uh, Robin Ince, actually yep. part of the film as well, which is all part of your Cosmic Shambles network. And um, so such a wide variety of people, you know, from Olympic medalists to astronauts. I mean, how did you go about putting this all together? Uh, well, it, we started with a couple of the people that we'd spoke to for the audio documentary idea, which was Dean was one of the people and uh, Matt Oxley, who's a, a motorsport historian, basically, he's written a lot of books about that. And then we had some rough ideas that we wanted to do something about perception of speed. So with with the motorcycle racing stuff, and then we wanted to do something about the speed of light uh, as, as like the universal speed limit. And then from there, we just started listing kind of everything that speed was related to. And then people would get in touch with us and go, oh, I know this person that uh, deals with the speed of population snail growth in Bermuda. Would you be interested in that? I was like, well, obviously we'd be interested in that. Let's do that. And then, well, <laughs> if we're going to do that, then we've got to do this. And then it just, yeah, the the list of things we included is ridiculously long, as is the list of things that we just couldn't fit in. Right. I mean, the, I suppose the original idea started, didn't it, from the Guinness Book of Records years ago in, you know, terms of how fast people would travel or how fast um, a person could move. Um, you know, so it, it is an interesting concept, especially the here and now, because actually, um, I mean, I noticed that you've already put that in the trailer. Um, it, we are actually, technology is evolving so much more than we have as people. Yeah, so we, in terms of that sort of stuff, we talk a bit about the speed of climate change and the increasing speed of that, but then also that the speed of technology growth, we, we kind of have everything that we need now to well, not stop climate change, but certainly to slow it down. And we look at... <laughs> You know, with motorsport being an example, that's a, a big thing with land speed records and, you know, Formula One racing and stuff that we've got the technology for better electric vehicles and, and fast electric vehicles. Just because we're not using fossil fuel doesn't mean that we can't still have a motorbike go at 400 kilometres an hour or break the land speed record with an electric vehicle. Like all this stuff exists. We can do it. It's just uh whether we've got the all of us have got the will and the political will to kind of make that to speed that up so there's there's really kind of a theme in the film of uh what stuff needs to speed up and what stuff needs to slow down in a society in a societal sense 
Well, I just hope that every single government in the world you know, across the globe has been invited to watch this film. Then. <laughs> I would like to think they would and then potentially listen, but uh, I'm not I'm not hugely optimistic about that, I have to say. <laughs> Mind you, <laughs> uh, in the meantime, it, it is media for the masses, isn't it? And I mean, you know, we really need to sort of get this message out and have a responsibility, even I as you know, somebody who does my own podcast. We've all got responsibility here, haven't we? Yeah, and that's something we kind of wanted to do with the documentary. And it's also what we do with with the kind of everything we do at Shambles is we have the little, uh, I suppose, that honey traps of the, the comedy and the music and the live shows and the, you know, fast cars and stuff in the documentary. But once we've once we've got you, we're going to go, oh, and here's this here's this little bit about physics that you really should know. And here's this about climate change. And here's this about electric vehicles. And here's this about the, the warming of the ocean and the speed of that sort of stuff. So once we can get people in, hopefully we can uh, impart a little bit of wisdom, shall we say. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, you know, every filmmaker has a message don't you really has a message whether it's you know um something that's a human interest film or something you know that is to do with just connecting people or showing you know different aspects of life and I think you know with this particular film that you've created here it really has got to hit hard home you know in terms of as we said climate change and looking after our planet really yeah, and we also, we didn't want it to, well, there's two things, I guess. We didn't want it to just be like the Guinness Book of Records, like a, a, a checkbox of this is the fastest car, this is the fastest motorbike, this is the fastest bird, this is the the slowest mammal, whatever. Obviously, we wanted to cover that stuff because that that is interesting, but we wanted to have uh, it to have a point as well, like the film to to say something about speed because the film is, is about... Uh, humans relationship to speed so if we're going to talk about that then we need to to cover it from all the angles so we really wanted it to have a point beyond just listing some some fun and exciting things I think yeah I mean it is also you know you could look at it from the other I mean you'd have to be pretty switched off wouldn't you to to watch this film (laughs) and just look at it from the excitement and the thrill of things going fast we have already, after it went out last night, got one email to that effect uh, uh, saying that it was, it was interesting uh, when it was just about speed, but then it got all woke propaganda. So we know those people are out there, but that, that's that's fine. They can have their own little whatever. <laughs> uh, but th- but like you say as well, it's we didn't just want it to be that as well. We didn't just want to be going, oh, it's all doom and gloom with climate change and this, that and the other, because at the end of the day, speed for its own sake is still something exciting. Other, you know, people like to go fast in cars. People like to go on roller coasters and skydive and do all that sort of stuff because it is innately thrilling. It's just, just because we, you know, should burn less fossil fuels doesn't mean we can't still go out and have fun and race around tracks and do all that sort of stuff. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a one or the other situation. No, I, I I totally agree with you. So therefore, really, I a good argument against your, you know, emailer who just said that they really thought it was kind of, you know, a bit overly woke, etc. I mean, it, it's, you know, not overly woke. It's got a, a fine balance, but also um, it, you know, you, you need to look at it from all angles. You can't. Can't yeah. that, and, can and also if we're if we're calling you know not letting the planet die woke then uh i think we've got bigger issues to discuss with that particular person and they're like absolutely absolutely because we've got to live in the here and now as well and i think um I mean, we are only responsible for last time i checked for two percent of um global carbon emissions in the uk However, mm. you know, we do have sort of yeah, a responsibility um, as far as that's concerned, but we still need to live, don't we? I mean, you know, it, there's been, I've been hearing a lot of research recently, as you said, there are 
solutions to the environmental problems. I mean, you know, how do we offset? How do we more offset, you know, against mm. that so that we can live our lives? I mean, just on a slight tangent, I interviewed um, a senior engineer in Eurospace from BAE Systems. And she said, you know, that the future is, is you know, like nuclear power planes. Mm. Yeah, well, we talk, uh, Alice Larkin is uh, the climate scientist and she works on climate policy and stuff that features in the film. And basically she was saying to us, it's, you know, we've got, we've got a decade. We've got the technology that we've got now. We just need mm -hmm. to better use it, better utilise it, better fund it to to start dialing back on on emissions and stuff you know a lot of the damage is already done but it doesn't mean that we can't dial it back and uh stop it from getting a lot worse and we also have in the film uh uh we featured the Ducati uh moto e-bike which is the new performance racing electric motorbike that is you know wow. it's not quite as fast as a moto gp bike but it's it's getting there and that's I think that's such a big thing that we have now in that realm, one of the big manufacturers of motorcycles in the world and not just, not just, uh, you know, like a for the road, they're a Ducati or a prestige motorcycle yeah. manufacturer. People love them. They're, a, you know, they're, they're a sexy bike. People want them. They're desirable. And now that they're making a performance electric motorbike, people start to go, Oh, well, if Ducati's doing it, then maybe there is something in it. And that's the kind of ball we need to get rolling. We need to make it, we need to start making this sort of stuff attractive and not just, uh, you know, we can bang on as much as we like. Yeah, going, <laughs> oh, look, we need to have a letter. Obviously we do, yeah. we all know that. But th that, that doesn't mean that we have to not have fun with it. We can mm -hmm. still have exciting electric powered motorbikes and cars. We It doesn't mean we all have to go to, you know, a little smart car. There, there, there are options. Really? McLaren have got the the hybrid car that's in the film as well. Oh, fantastic! I've also heard that. Um, we shouldn't really be mentioning brand names, but who cares? Um, <laughs> uh, BMW as well have also um working on a hydrogen car, aren't they? Purely hydrogen. Yeah, and you've got I have hydrogen buses as well. Yeah, there's hydrogen power. There's uh, I was in Japan. Oh God. A long time ago, I honestly can't remember now, over 10 years ago, I think, uh, and I was out at the Honda factory there and they were, you know, they were working on stuff that we still haven't even seen on the road, but they've been, you know, the big companies are working on it. It just, when is the tipping point when it becomes profitable? That's the the problem I think we've got. Well, yeah, I mean, we could be here all day and it, it would be really good to have somebody in a position of power because, you know, obviously they still back fossil fuels for a reason because they're so easily accessible. Um, but in regards to developing other fuels, I mean, now is the time. It's just the question of moving money around, isn't it? Yeah, essentially, there's a, I hope that the tipping point is very close. Yeah, don't we all? Don't we all? So, and a good yeah. tipping point, not the tipping point into the point of no return. Absolutely. So, yeah, no, hopefully the right governments can be tipped to, to actually, you know, rethink how they're paying for energy. Um, I mean, that is, would you say, is it fair to say that, Perhaps we are kind of, as an observation, kind of going through that because of the cost of living crisis anyway. What do you mean, sorry? Well, because of the cost of living crisis and, you know, the reason that uh, the energy has gone up so much, would you say mm. that, you know, really perhaps we are kind of reviewing it across different countries? Or not enough, maybe, I, I don't know. I think it's really... It's really difficult at the moment when you look at, uh, you know, like the cost of an electric car is much higher than a fossil fuel powered car. So, mm -hmm. but petrol is also very cheap, uh, very cheap. No, it's not. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but you've, you've got to try and in the middle of this cost of living, convince people, oh, you need to spend more money on this more expensive car because 
that's going to save the planet, but they're more worried about, you know, a, a day-to-day thing. So I think it falls, the responsibility falls on on the, the people that can afford to switch to an electric car, who can afford to switch to renewable energy to start leading the way. And then the more, the more people that can afford to do it, start doing it, then obviously that in theory makes it cheaper for, for other people to start, to start switching over it's you know it's what we did with um um well unleaded petrol and stuff so it Hmm. we can do it yeah i mean it's an interesting debate isn't it because you know i'm i'm really behind your your whole idea and concept in your your film um i really am but it's it's an interesting idea because although they keep talking about electric cars and oh we should have electric cars how do we honestly think that electric cars are fueled, so to speak? They're fueled by fossil fuels. Well, yeah, obviously in the manufacture of the batteries and that sort of stuff. But I think I think the easy trap to fall into there mm-hmm. is the uh, looking for a silver bullet. There, there's not a thing that is the immediate solution. Right. Is an electric powered car better than uh, burning a fossil fuel power car, obviously it is. So is it the perfect solution? No, but it's it's definitely a step in the right direction, I think. So we have the option of going, oh, there's an imperfect solution. So instead of doing that, I'm uh, I'm still going to do the thing that is, is much, much worse. It's, I guess it's kind of like the equivalent of going, oh, I couldn't find my dream house. So I guess the only other option is to live in a bin. Like, well, no, just get something that's that's slightly less. Like, there, there's steps towards this. Yeah. No, you're you're absolutely right, and uh, you know, I I think it it it's a brilliant concept that you definitely put together, and I really look forward to actually watching it online. Um. So, where can you go and look at it online? So it's out now worldwide on YouTube for free for everyone. So you can go to cosmicjambles.com slash rapid motion. It'll show you the links for that. We've got some screenings around the place in the UK as well. If you want to see it on a big screen with, you know, some Q and A's with people like me and Robin and Helen Chersky and that sort of stuff. Uh, And then obviously, because we, it got out of control, we filmed hundreds of hours of stuff for the film. So we're making, at least 25 hours of bonus stuff available for uh, Cosmic Shambles Patreon subscribers and also members of the RI. Uh, so we produced it in association with the Royal Institution. So if you're a member of Shambles or them, you'll get access to loads of all the stuff we had to cut out. Well, yeah, because you can only make it so long. I I know. I've yeah. got a TV background, so I feel for you. I can feel your pain already. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the first rough cut was six and a half hours. Uh, and then we've got it down to under two hours, which is the final version. Brilliant. Well, congratulations and well done, because, you know, hopefully a lot more people will get to actually view this and have a better understanding of what we can actually do across the planet, because it's already been proven, isn't it? It's it's a we hope so. fact that we can travel at the speed of light. So, hmm. Well, yeah, it's we we hope people get lured in by, you know, wanting to see some of the the cool stuff. And, you know, we went to CERN and, uh, you know, astronauts and all that sort of stuff. And then uh, in part, little tidbits of a combination of fun facts and also hopefully some uh, future proofing, shall we say. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it, it sounds brilliant. Um, so, I mean, just one sort of last question. Was this kind of like your um most challenging film so far to date because you've been making films for a while haven't you yeah i've done uh this is our first documentary feature through shambles but i've uh made bits and pieces independently before and we've done you know lots of series and that sort of stuff uh through cosmic shambles as well web series and documentary series and all that sort of stuff i th- i think the unique challenge of this was setting ourselves the target of keeping it under 2 hours like i said and and getting getting as much stuff as we possibly could into 2 hours you know that's what we do with our live shows we have loads of uh different speakers coming on and doing 7 minute bits on all sorts of stuff so 
that was another appeal of doing something about speed. It was such a good topic that we could drop in bits and pieces of everything. We could bounce around from sport to physics, to biology, to climate change, to geology, to comedy, to neuroscience, and kind of just ping it all around. So from that, in some ways, it was, it was kind of like curating the nine lessons and compendium shows. It was kind of getting it, getting a nice balance of everything jammed into a, into a finite package. Yeah. Definitely. Well, well, well done, because, you know, it must have taken you hours of sitting in, a, you know, watching an editing suite. Um, yeah, I didn't see daylight for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, well, well, good news. And, you know, I, I wish it every success and I, I really look forward to actually watching it myself um, because, yeah, it, it looks amazing um and as i said you know you must be kind of reeling off the back of that for a long time to come with all those different people that you interviewed um that really understand you know what the concept is yeah well in typical me and robin style we've already halfway through filming the next film uh, we'd started filming that before this one was even finished so yeah straight into the into the middle of that and then the next thing and then we've always got 500 projects on the go at once absolutely yeah no that sounds like robin so um i have actually interviewed him and i think uh dean burnett as well before right. so yeah yeah so i'm i'm very familiar with their work and um yeah he's he's such a character isn't he so um yeah we we, we don't we're not good at sitting still robin and me no no <laughs> <laughs> I doubt he ever does. He's always got his head in books as well, hasn't he? So uh, well, that that's the the film we're working on at the moment is uh is about independent bookshops and Robin's book obsession, actually. Oh yeah. Oh fantastic. That sounds really good. So um yeah, that that that'll be another cracker, I'm sure. So and far too much footage already shot. <laughs> that's what we like to hear. Right. Well, you know, thank you for coming on and letting me know all about it and the listeners as well. So, um, yeah, wish you every luck and we can try and find it on YouTube then. Perfect. Thanks very much for having me. Look forward to chatting to my next guest. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn and Instagram. Just search for Tea Time with Annie Monjack. Bye for now.